Hi, this is Ken Tran with GeekBeat TV, and I'm here to talk about the live stream HD 500 production unit. Hi guys! So many of you know we use a lot of streaming products here at GeekBeat TV, and one of the new things that we got sent over a few weeks ago was the live stream HD 500. Now, as you can see here, the live stream HD 500 is a all-encompassing portable streaming unit. It fits in this large duffel bag right here that fits inside pretty much any carry-on that you can get onto an airplane. And depending on the airline, you can actually fit it under your airline seat. Now let's take a look at some of the features of the HD 500. So you can see here, uh, when we did our unboxing, Callie and John pulled out the HD 500 and uh, took a look at it. And you can see how small it actually is. One of the cool features about the HD 500 is the fact that it has a built-in HD LCD screen. As you can see here, you just take the panel off that protects it, and now you have a full screen. If you look at some of our other little views here, you can see, uh, see uh, the system online as we're going. On the back, you have a bunch of different uh, inputs. You have four HD SDI inputs, plus an additional fifth one for other uses, as well as different types of uh, HDMI and VGA ports. Uh, and the whole system itself fits into a travel size bag, as you can see, that can pretty much uh, carry over your shoulder and fit into just about any airline system. So as you can see here, John has it right in his uh, hand that you can just throw it on their seat. So uh, further moving on, we have uh, some other features I like to talk about. Uh, once again, we can show off the different ports that we have available here. Oop. The different ports we have available here. We have uh, four, one, two, three, four, uh, HD SDI inputs. Those allow us to take in any type of HD feed as well as a fifth one for an additional uh, whatever we want to do. Now this fifth card actually acts as a multi-bus system. You can either be an HD SDI feed, it can be an HDMI feed, it can be a component, S-video, composite, or any type of analog system that you want. It depends on what you want. You can configure it to do whatever you want to do. Uh, in addition to that, we have, all we can see, we have a five input system. We have cameras one, two, three, four. Camera five is currently set to be actually a black and white system, or a color bar system I have right now set up. So that way I have a uh, nice little color bars I can use uh, whenever I feel like it. Now in addition to being an uh, ultra portable system, it's actually an ultra featured system as well. The HD 500 can do everything from production, live production switching, recording, and streaming all at the same time. But uh, let's just go through an entire workflow and see what it's like. So you can see here I have queued up on the previous pane on the and the preview pane on the left is a graphics overlay system that I've composited together, which includes a little bit of a video in the background and a countdown timer. What's cool is about this thing has a number of different countdown systems in it, as well as clocks and uh, timers that you can put into the, into the little graphics overlay. And here I've set up a countdown, so when I hit the go button, it will actually start counting down, and when the countdown is done, it will actually switch over to what's next in the preview. So let's uh, just go ahead and go live with this one. So now it's counting down. Let me queue up the next video here that I want to play, which would be this little bumper. And go. So now I'll switch the door and place this little bumper. And when it's done, I'm going to queue up and go back to myself. It's very simple. It's pretty cool. Just like many other different production switchers, it has automatic transitions once it's done and once it hits certain key points in the program itself. So another cool thing we can do with this system is let me go back to the graphics system, which you can see I queued, where I queued up the original uh, little countdown system is we do things like, of course, like simple lower thirds. So let's uh, pull up my little uh, lower bug here, which is on the second graphics system. This system has two graphics systems that you can use, as well as two media systems. So let's uh, air our uh, lower third here. Oh, hey, look, I have a low lower third. Now, what's really cool about this system is the lower third in the text system in the graphics system is actually a dynamic text system, as in you can queue up multiple different things multiple different sets of data fields into into the workflow itself. So what do I mean by that? Well, okay, so we have here as this lower third, right? Well, in other systems, you might have to recreate the lower third over and over and over again with different names and different text. Here, you just use one graphic system to create it, and then you can just queue up all your text in this little uh, data field. So what you're doing is it's actually populating data fields like if you had an Excel sheet and a mail sh where you uh, took the next cell data sheet and fed it into like a label maker program, it would just populate the labels with all your different data. This is the same idea here. As you can see in the bottom 
right here in the bottom oop, right here in the bottom corner down you can see that I've pre-populated my name but hey if I want to switch over say we have a different person we cut to a different camera I want to talk to someone else I can just click on that and as you can see it just changes over and I can go right back over to my name again it fades in and it fades out pretty clean pretty smooth pretty nice so let's uh, get rid of that here for a second goodbye so the other cool thing about the system is that the graphic system itself is fully designable you know I can design different types of uh, different types of graphic systems like such as these two window composites everything is basically based on the idea of objects you know, I can throw in a bunch of camera objects, I can throw in like video objects, I can throw in static image objects on top of them and layer them together and rearrange the layers as needed. So here in this system, I system over here, oop, this system this way, yep, is I have a two box system where I'm taking two cameras, which happen to be the same cameras in this situation, and put them in at the same time. But I can also do crazy things like have a four camera system. Oop, let's make sure my data is there. All right. So if I go live with this system, oop. Oh, there we go. So you have, let's see, let's go live with, let's go live with uh, this one right here. Okay. So now if we go live with this one, you can see that I've populated four different cameras. Now two of the cameras I hear are the same because I only have two cameras going into it. But you have two other cameras that you can see uh, on here. As well as you can see the use of the data fields where I can, where I can actually pre-populate whatever I want these labels to say. So if you look on the design system here, it says just labels one, two, three, and four. But if you go back into the data back end, I can fill in whatever data I want. And I can have multiple different trays of these data fields that I want to use. And I can switch to them whenever I want to. So let's go back to uh, that. So another cool thing is uh, you can do, and further on, another example of the data field system is you can use it to create like little bullet points that you can see right here. Uh, basically, I have just a bunch of different bullet points and uh, a name and a camera in the system. It's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is just uh, create a new lower third like this and just add fields in, such as static text, you know, you can add images, or you can add cameras that you can just kind of move around. You know, I can add as many cameras as I want. And it's pretty easy to do if you need to crop a camera, or you can rescale it, of course. You can rescale the camera here, make it larger or smaller as needed. You can also crop it if you go into that mode, and you can crop it and make it smaller. You can see what it looks like on the real system or on the what's the previous system right here. You can see what's going on, what I'm doing to this little field here, as well as you can change the opacity. And of course, you can always just change the camera input as well. Oops, camera two is the same, so let's try that one. Let's try that one. Yeah. So you can of course always do something like that. So let's go back to this here. So furthermore, uh, this system also has a full featured audio system as well. As you can see here in the lower part to the lower, oops, this way, to the lower part here, you can see the full mixer system where we have stream out feeds, record out feeds, camera one, two, three, four, all the different camera feeds we have as well as the media feeds. Um, for In this system, it has a follow system. So when I switch cameras around, as you can see here, you can see that the the marker will follow whatever camera I go to. Now the other feature of this is when I uh, cut to these different cameras, like this, is the different audio will go live. So right now camera one is live and camera three is on preview. And now I'm going back the other way. Now it looks like everything's the same because all the cameras are picking up audio and they're coming in at the same time. But rest assured that currently right now camera three's audio is live and now camera one's audio is live. Furthermore, I can do things like link the cameras together. As you can see right here, this camera two feed is actually linked to camera one. So when I cut to camera three, it's only pulling audio from camera three. But when I cut to camera one or camera two, it's always gonna use the camera one audio at the same time. So say you're at a red carpet event and you're on the red carpet with an interviewer doing an interview with a superstar and then you have two cameras both piping in audio to their individual cameras. You might not necessarily need both audio from cameras, or, or, very, or worst case, only one of the cameras actually has audio. So in this situation, you can have two cameras at one remote location with audio going in, and you can cut to the two different cameras on the follow system and be able to follow the audio and stay with, uh, stay with the audio after the two interviewers. In the meantime, you can use cameras three and four with another pair of interviewers getting ready to interview another star on the red carpet in a different location so when you cut to this third location, it will cut the audio from the first two and go to the second set. 
and uh, and you can confine this in many different configurations. But that's uh, one of the cool things about the follow system, which is pretty common in a lot of switching systems. But this the way they've implemented here is actually pretty clean and pretty elegant. So and you can also go into the input settings and adjust the different gain levels and where or not they feed to the left or right or stereo or whatever you want to do and uh, however you want to do it. Uh, currently right now I have camera 5 as you can see right over there. Oop, this way, yep, over that way. Camera 5 is currently set up as a color bar system but I can also set it to be just black bars or a red color bar, whatever color I want to do. And you get two of those systems. You can assign two different cameras as that. Currently, I just have one so I can have a nice little color bar system. It also includes like a test tone, which is basically one kilohertz test tone. So you can check your audio levels and make sure everything is uh, working out kosher. So moving on, you've already seen a little bit about the media playback system. So we'll just co cover that a little bit more in a little more detail here. So say I have a bunch of video here in this little bin. If I just preview it up, if I set it to autoplay and I hit go, it'll start playing. And when it's done, it'll switch back to whatever is in my previous system, which happens to be myself. Now, this system also allows you to uh, repeat single items. Or if you click this one, it'll actually go through and play through the entire list you have set up here. So you can queue up a bunch of different videos, say reruns or different segments or different bumpers you want to run, and just say go, and it'll continue doing it. So you have two of these systems right here. Well, certainly the second system is running this little trolley thing that we use in the back of our graphics tilers. Furthermore, of course, I said that the system also was a streaming system. So you can actually stream to different units, such as uh, live stream. Log in right here. So you just log into live stream, and you can stream to different places. You can try different events. It works best with live stream, of course, as you imagine. But you can also stream to YouTube and Ustream natively, where they'll pick up your different events and allow you to pick them out. Or you can just set up your own RTMP to stream to any CDN you want, such as Justin TV or Blippi or anything that you want to stream to. Now, another cool thing that you have is a bunch of different wipes, as, as you can imagine. There are tons of different wipes here that you can try, like uh, this slide over effect, or that type of effect or this crazy little star effect here, you know. There's lots of different things that you can use to have a little fun with your production. Now moving on, I also said this is a recorder, so if you just click this button right here, you start recording the program. Now, on the included system, you have about 500 gigabytes of hard drive space. That will give you about 10 hours of recording at 1080i, which is what the system is currently configured as. But uh, you can record at different systems, lower resolutions, higher, lower resolutions, that will give you more time if you need it. And of course, you click this button right here, or if you click it in this tab right here, you can start streaming. Now, one there are a few caveats of this system that are uh, that are kind of a gotchas. One, I may say this has five inputs, and it may imply it has five inputs, and that's actually very true. But the problem is, if you want to have a broadcast out to, like, say, another switcher or another uh, platform where you want to take the direct digital feed out of here and go into another system, you can't do five feeds you only have five buses available. So that what that means is there are four inputs that you can use, and the fifth one can be set either as an input or an output. So if you want to send it to, like, say, another switcher or another production system, you actually have to sacrifice that fifth input and turn it into an output. But on the other hand, if you can still use all five outputs or all five inputs at the same time and have something going out to, say, the house, there is an HDMI feed available on the back here where you can actually use that you can actually use to send out to whatever you want to. The problem is it won't have audio, it's only a video feed, and it'll actually probably be a few seconds behind as well or a few frames behind as well. It's good for like a house feed if you want to send it out to say like a conference on those big screens or just TVs around the center. But you can't use it for say actual production itself. And that's a that's a disappointing feature problem with it, but it's not that huge of a miss. One thing I would love to see, though, is if that HDMI feed could be configured not just for a program feed, but could be set up as a preview feed. So say my talent wants to see what's on the preview screen, or some type of multi-view so that I can say other people in the staff or other production uh, team members can see what the current status of all the different cameras are without having to look over my shoulder or uh, try look at, a, look at a, a different camera routing system. Another gotcha that I'd like to mention is the fact that even though it has a great mixer system where you can have all different types of audio coming in and out from your cameras, 
that also assumes that you're embedding the audio in your camera itself. In some situations that doesn't work because you're going to have an external audio mixer, someone on the board doing your audio and you need to send that analog audio back into the system or even if it was a digital audio you have to send it back into the system. The only way to get that audio back into the system is either to embed it inside of one of your cameras as in run the audio from your mixer into one of your cameras and have the cameras send everything down the line or you have to use the fifth audio or fifth video input as an analog audio capture system. And that means, one, you have to have a camera plugged into that fifth input in order to send it video because it can't just do audio only and not and ignore the video part. It has to have both. Or, or you just can't use external audio in that situation at all. And that's one gotcha that I wish uh, it had a dedicated audio capture system to send analog audio down the line. Otherwise, the HD500 is actually a pretty good system. I mean, the top features of it are, of course, its portability. I mean, you can't beat the fact that this entire system fits inside this little bag right here that you can just kind of throw over your shoulder or just carry on your side or and fit underneath. In certain situations, you can actually fit this bag underneath the seat in front of you on an airline, which is pretty valuable. So overall, at $8,500, this is not a cheap system. But remember, this is a professional system. It's designed for professionals to use on the road when they go on gigs. Uh, you can pack this entire thing up, throw it onto an airplane, and you're good to go once you get to the event. There's no setup. All you have to do is just plug cameras in, plug your power in, plug your network in, keyboard and mouse, which are all included in the bag, and you're good to go. Uh, that's a great time saver and it's a great uh, you know, sanity saver, so you don't have to worry about checking in a streamer. You don't have to check, worry about checking in a switcher, checking in a uh, monitor, and then have, make sure all those three different items come together on an airplane. Make sure that you don't get lost by the luggage handlers. And then having to set them all up once you get to the event. All this you have to do is just drop it down on the table and you're done. So for, for, uh, for its value, it's actually a very good value at $8,500. Uh, especially compared to some of its competing products. Overall though, I think the live stream H D 500 is a great system to use if you are looking to do uh, live, streaming in, uh, live streaming in the near future. Especially if you want to go onto the road. My name is Ken Tran and I'm here with GeekBeat TV. So if you like our videos, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit click that subscribe button, and uh, give us a comment saying what, what do you think about this system? Would you guys use this? Would you uh, want to buy one of these systems instead of uh, say some of the other products for your stream, uh, stream productions? So anyways, my name again is Ken Tran and thanks for watching.